Hello and welcome back, everybody, as we are preparing for game number four for our lower bracket semifinals match. Loser goes home. Winner will match up against Lit Esports for the final spot available in the yeah. summer split for NACL. Pressure mounting for these teams as everything is on the line for the spring season. Right now, Blue Otter, they're up 2-1 beat. Yeah, that's right. And it's like you said, the winner doesn't necessarily punch their ticket, but they take that next step, which is yes. the most important thing. They can worry about lit tomorrow. What matters is right here and now winning that series. And for Winthrop University, what matters is trying to make the comeback because game one was looking solid from them, but it seems like Blue Otter have had their number ever since. Yeah, and I, the fact that Blue Otter made game one so close and it came down to, you know, a very uh, you know aggressive engage from music and then a rough team fight at the end and it was over but they got to a late game state seemed like maybe they could have closed that out there's a world where this was a 3-0 like that's kind of crazy to think about considering yeah. the caliber of players that are on Winthrop and kind of my expectation for them coming in but uh either way Blue Otter definitely impressing I think Sammy can we got to still talk him up as one of the uh you know dominant players on the team so shout outs to the mid laner but that brings us to a very important part here at Beatdown. We got our Subway best of five sidekicks Woo! we need to assign to the teams. Now it is Fearless Draft, which means a couple of champions are not available for one or both teams. So let's yeah. take turns bouncing back and forth. There's three sidekicks that you can get on the Subway menu. Beatdown, what's your first sidekick that you want to give to the audience? Mm, my first sidekick, since we're talking, since Winthrop are the ones who have their backs against the wall, uh, I'm going to say the Rise for Sword. I've Ooh. been talking about it before. He's Have the only it. one who's played it so far. I think it is a really good champion. And considering with what's left in Sammy Kim's pool, things like the Oriana, which is uh, okay. very likely what they might be leaning towards, that would be a good answer uh, for Sword and the rest of Winthrop. Interesting call. And it's not something that many players uh, pilot in this meta right now, so it would be yeah. unique it's good, for though. Sword in particular. All right, let's go with mine then. If we're going up to three, my second pick for a Subway Best of Five sidekick, let's go Senna. I'm going to go bot lane focus here. Get something safe okay. for the side of Winthrop University. Senna Tom Kenj is still, I believe, available for them, which will open yeah. up Denethor, and they are on red side, to go for a counter pick and try and play through top side. Because so far, Denethor hasn't really been getting that many resources as a top laner, thank you so much. So you can't go Senna that makes it Nautilus easier, yeah. here, but we can't <laughs> yeah, use Senna right. Tom Kench. That's still available. Yeah, that's still an option. If you want to get spicy, you know, maybe we see Senna Cho'Gath, Senna Orn. You know, we can have a little fun with it for Winthrop, especially with tournament lives on the line. Maybe they got to bring out something really spicy. So I like the Shao Kangas. I, since Senna got nerfed a, a bit on this patch, people have pulled away from her, but still a viable pick, especially this late into a Fearless Draft. Well, there you go. Our best of five sidekicks. We got Senna. We got Rise. Let's see if the teams decide to go for them themselves as we are into pick and ban for game number four here. Blue Otter Esports need one more game win to have a chance and another best of five. They got yeah, more in front of them, I guess. It's yeah. not over yet today. But, but this uh, best of with the university, they're going to have to come back a little bit here and win two in a row with their backs against the wall. And so far, no change in the bands. We do not want Nico. We do not want Zoe. So a lot of mids have been targeted so far this series, and honestly, this tournament. So, okay, they ban Ori again. I'm wondering if they're going to ban the Rise, because, you know, if you've been watching the games, Sword will play it in this specific scenario. I think True. it ends up being something Winthrop might lean towards. I was kind of expecting them to leave the Ori up and pick it, but if this is the case, maybe they have something else cooked up for Sammy Kid. I mean... Nautilus is uh, available ban here from Winthrop. Oh, Talia. Wow. I just realized we have oh, they want to play Zeri. They want to play Zeri. They want to play Zeri. That is on the table for them. They've gone yeah. through the Lucian, the Jinx, the Aphelios. Varus makes it through pick and ban, though. Yeah. I mean, the fact that Winthrop blew so many of those power picks in game one, it got them the win. But this is the issue in a fearless best of five is that now there's so many other power picks that will make it through because yeah. you got to ban the Zoe as that pocket pick. If you want to give a better lane for mobility chookies, I guess Callista is the option they went for. So Varus no. makes it through, and it still seems to be that Zeri locked in here, but it's going to be a little uh, scary. Because Vi is the up. The That's the problem. Vi is up. Blue Honor still have right. Nautilus. So this is actually, I think, going to end up being a pretty hard game for Zeri, especially if they just want to go ahead and slam those champions probably right away here on 2 3. Yeah, Nautilus and Vi. Easy one. I think yeah. you said it. 
if your blue otter just commit, they still could go Tom Ken Shazari. But I mean, it, it, if you want to end the series right here, right now, you might as well just go all in on the kill the enemy AD carry oh. basket. But is seen in Azir, they actually go for the Ace Soul and will still go for that Nautilus, given the chance yeah. for a Vi ban, but opting for the mid lane instead. I think it's fine going either Vi or Nautilus here, just because you do have that point and click CC and hopefully sure. the setup to take down the Zeri. And the Aurelian Soul is interesting. Like, it's a fine matchup. So far, it also puts pressure on Winthrop to get more CC in their composition. Because I, I said this in the last game, something that I re is uh, really good about Asol is that his lane phase is, is pretty safe, Kangas, for the most part. You need a lot of CC to pressure him. That's why I like Grovex's Pike. And now, even with this Renata, like, uh, I'm not seeing it yet. I think Samikin's going to have a good game, just based on what we've seen so far. The fact that it's Renata means I think you have to ban the Vi now. Yeah, the yeah, fact yeah, that yeah. it's not Tom Kench. Because Tom Kench gets a lot of value against Nautilus Vi as a combo, because you yeah. just can kind of protect him from both. But now that you have Renata, she cannot necessarily do the same. Those point and clicks will be point and click it. So Rumble is the first ban here. I'm expecting Vi's second, but it's actually Nar as the answer from Blue Otter. With red yeah, side from Winthrop, they sense. are expecting a counter pick top lane. That is one of the annoying ones that you can do. Yeah, I think it's also this chance that, I mean, you're banning away uh, a strong one like Rumble. They want to make sure you don't go for a safe blind for Denethor. Maybe they're going to keep jungle till the last pick. I think that's fine. Plus, it's the CC that I was talking about, too. So right now, the engage, it's not there for Winthrop. So you're removing some of the options for that, which I, I like the call so far from Blue Otter. We didn't ban the Vi. We banned the Wukong. So that's Winthrop tough. University are giving it up. We just buy our Maybe. Email. Maybe oh, they no, have their own already, jungle uh, that they're happy with. Already. You could go for something like what a Poppy here, I suppose, if you want sure. other counters to dissuade the Vi pick. But Poppy doesn't get a lot of value against what's already showing, so I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, it so does now. Shivani instead. I am. Um, you sold me on the Poppy, Kangas. I'm not going to lie. So it is going to end up being Denethor on that last pick. I'm wondering if it's the Cassante as well, because they banned the Gwen. That's something that Denethor has been uh, willing to play, and it is uh, not often capitalized on, but it is a counter that people True. will use from time to time. Yeah, Denethor loves that Gwen. I do like Cassante Vi Kindred yeah. instead. Yeah. So we're not going for full on point and click R, shut down the carry. We're going for a more well rounded style team composition from Blue Otter. Yeah, and I think it's. Fine, just because so far what I'm seeing here for Winthrop, it is that all-in coming through here. Uh, I'm trying to wait for what this last pick. Olaf was up. exciting. Olaf and Agragas can it be might very end up being explosive. Olaf. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if it is that. But Whoa! Camille, Denethor, Camille, this is one of his That's most a, played yes. when he was trying out for a starting spot on NACL teams going into the year. Very impressed with his performance on this, and I'm excited that we all get to see it today. Yeah, that's an exciting one. I mean, it's nice too, because against low mobility carries, against champions that are trying to space you and keep you at arm's length, like Varus, like Asol, I and Camille, that Hexic Ultimatum is a really good response. You're also good into tanks, which Gragas basically is. So mm -hmm. I think if there was ever gonna be a time to make it happen, it's here, tournament lives on the line. This player we're so excited yeah. about is pulling out the pocket pick. And I, I will say, depending on Lawrence's comfortability with this matchup, from my understanding, Gragas body slam will interrupt the Camille uh, hook shot. Yeah. So I don't know necessarily if Camille has an easy job here. I'm, I'm not a top laner. I, I don't know this matchup, but in my head, there's opportunities for the Gragas to still survive and try and outplay. But Lord, uh, this is not a common pick. Like Camille's not all over the place and solo queue is no. not all over the place, especially in competitive. So does Lawrence know the matchup and is he ready for it? Is Blue Otter ready to book their tickets to that next best of five? Or will Winthrop put the brakes on this series and bring it back to an even two and two? Let us know in chat who you're rooting for, Blue Otter or Winthrop University. Well, Blue Otter, they've earned themselves a lot of fans in this series, and I think rightfully so. Oh, Chookies. This is uh, not how you want to start if you're Winthrop University. Not going to lie to you. Use the heal, still has a flash, will use it, but no summoner spells for the support of Winthrop as well as a dredge line into the mid lane sword. Spine gets out of that one. That's a rough start though. Now this bot lane's got a target on its back. I gotta say really quickly, I think we gotta give some
praise over to Blue Otter for how they played the level one so far this series and just how they've ran the early game. Mm -hmm. Even if things end up going awry and they lost like they did in game one or they lost control uh, like in the beginning of game two. I think the early set plays that they have have been working out really well. It's usually a coaching staff thing, so, you know, coaches, okay. if you're listening, that's a Shout pat out. yourself on the back angle. That is a fantastic point. I'm happy you bring up, Eve, because game one, they read the 5v5 oh, yes, exactly. invade. That last game, Music had the incredible jungle read of just clearing out the entire bot camps and then going for that early uh, gank in the bot lane. Like, they have had game plans every single time coming yes. into this series. And yet again, they get rewarded for it. Yeah, they do. Speaking of... This bot lane is going to be rewarded a little bit because Chookies has no summoner spells to speak of due to that early play. I mean, maybe the push is going to still be in favor of uh, mobility and Chookies because of double range, but I, with music pathing down, there is an angle, even though Kindred doesn't traditionally gank, that we could see a play get set up for. Interesting to see the Rovex as the Glacial Augment instead of uh, Aftershock. Aftershock. So it's going to be a little less tanky, but will be harder still for Chookies to get away. Denethor just destroying Lawrence as he gets level 2. Big health trade. Is he going to go for a solo no. kill to grasp? Proc did a lot there. Lawrence hits level 2, so he should be fine. Ooh. Yeah, and as, as always, good early trading for Denethor. Seems like he has a good understanding of a lot of the matchups that he plays in. And again, that's why we hype up a player like him. So now he's forcing... Lawrence into a bit of an awkward position. He was going to back, but then he remembered he's Gragas, and he has a lot of sustain. Oh, another oh, good trade oh, right no. there, and he's got oh, the jungler no. in his back pocket here. The artist formerly known as Trickster has arrived. Lawrence has flash. He'll need to use it to stay alive here. Body slams in, trying to get the outplay. First blood to Denethor, and Trickster flashes to safety. It was a good attempt, but the dive was just too easy with how Denethor had just whittled away at Lawrence's health pool. So first blood to the Camille, the, one of his uh, most played champions, like you had mentioned, Kangas, and someone who can have a big impact on this game as well. So it's good for Winthrop to be able to get that econ on him early. Pretty much every game this has happened, Denethor wins the initial trade, pushes Lawrence back, forces a TP to lane, or just a bad reset here. This time around, he also gets the first blood coming back with Sheen. That's going to be brutal. Dive in the bot lane, though. Blue Otter want to find something, but they're just getting destroyed under here. Uh, they're not even taking turret, and Mobility picks up a kill. Oh, no. That's, that, uh, yeah. That's, that's not good. That is a slip up. That's going to cost you dearly. Mobility has double buffs now as a result. I Music lost out on the mark because it ended up spawning topside, and now Samikin is under threat mid. Rovex could look for a turn here, though. I like the idea of just, yeah, turn and burn onto the Renata, but Mobility still has a ghost. Double buff, he's jumping man. forward with the red buff. I hadn't noticed that. Woo. Nice sidestep from Rovex as Link's still trying to get as much trade as he can onto Tricky's onto Mobility. He's just hovering around the area, but will be spotted on a ward. So just take the crap, bro. Please. Rook's bot lane should be fine here. Music really getting aggressive right now. Could just go for the crab, but... Now the Sejuani is hovering in the area. With the health bars of W's bot lane, though, they can't really contest this. Maybe it's just a smite steal? Nope, it's fine. Uh, no. I think he's music's a level up. He should be able to uh, get the Sejuani away from this. It's uh, a bit of a, a crazy start to this game here uh, for Blue Otter, but Winthrop, when it really counts, series on the line. They are the ones who start this early game swinging. Now a two-wave uh, advantage for Denthor in that top lane. As the Sheen completed, we'll shove this next wave in, and that should be Grubs as well inside of Winthrop as Jwani's pathing towards the top half of the map. Let's see if Music reads that, and if Blue Otter try and go for an early Dragon as recompense. You can see Lawrence trying to get that freeze on the top side. Could set up for a play onto Denethor. Or at the very least, just make it so that he can delay that crash and that his team can show up and help. By the way, Music's going to start this Grubs camp so far. It's not going to be an early Dragon play. Instead, they want us to just get whatever early Golden XP they can and deny what can end up being a pretty solid resource from Winthrop if you get five or six Grubs. You get fine with just getting the one. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Music, I'm happy to get the one. Get out of there. Denethor's Ooh, level six. Hey. He's level four in a really rough spot. His sword has now joined in. 
We have the ultimate for Camille. This is a big fight for WU, oh, the but the shuffle. shuffle back from Swords, what starts it off, and Winthrop will clean up the fight. Sammy Kin tries to get as much damage down with the breath as possible. That's a flash away. Denethor follows wow. up with a double kill. Winthrop University just slaughter Blue Otter in their own jungle. And it's 2K up in six minutes, by the way, Kegis. I mean, Blue Otter, they're falling apart at the seams. They're taking these fights that they really don't need to. I, we got to look at this one right here. Music, you called it, Kangas. You only need one grub. Realistically, you're fine with the first one. And Music walks away. Rovex, I, this is what I don't like. Like, we don't have to do this. Sword, you should know, has the first move. And we're just getting crazy when we have the upper hand in the series. Yeah, that was a rough look from the side of Blue Otter. They're going to want that fight back for sure. But it all stems from Denethor having that lead. Gets the first blood. Gets the wave advantage, CS advantage, level advantage. Lawrence was only level five during that fight, has just now hit level six. And the fact that they had ultimates available while Blue Otter did not, yeah. really big news. And it looks like Lynx had to cleanse during that replay here, presumably from either Chickies or Sejuani in the bot lane. We're going for a dive on the Denethor, trying to shut down this Camille here. Three members, can they get... Camille down and hook shots away. Dredge line back. Oh, Robux is what? just gonna go down. Okay. Okay, that was a really rough dive yet again. Blue Otter, they keep setting these up and they just can't execute them. You see the play. You see the plan. They're just not able to pull them off. Oh, I mean, we gotta give that quick shout out to Lynx. Recalling out of respect. He's gotta drop that wave. So he is going to be down about 10 CS, but it could have been so much worse if he was in position to get Dove on. And at least it gives Music a chance to get uh, the remaining grubs to Blue Water. I One, they prevent Winthrop from getting five or six, and there's a chance for them to do it if the opportunity presents itself. But Winthrop still very much in the lead. I'm just shocked at the momentum swing in this series. Blue Otter were coming in looking strong. Even in their loss, they looked pretty good. Yeah. And now they're just looking out of sorts here. Like these dives, it just feels like they're not communicating who's supposed to engage. I think it's got to be Robex most of the time. But speaking of, he might just go down here. Chain of Corruption oh. used the damage under Chookies. But with the Sejuani nearby, means that there's no further play from the side of Lynx and Robex. Now one going in the mid lane here from Samikin to jump over that wall, but you see that the Sejuani was bot side, so you are safe. And now they're making the plan to Denethor that they wanted. No hook shot available. Now uses it, gets out. For now, he's fine. I was gonna say just flash four for music, he gets it. So that's something that ends up going. It is the shutdown also to music on this Kindred. I mean, we're Big too. source of damage later on into the games. It's right, level six, as we got a trade of jungle camps cross map, so music's still gonna be slightly ahead of this Sejuani. And I actually kind of want to see the mark count if we get a chance. He's at four. Yeah, he's at, at four. Right oh, now. that's the first. Uh, that's the first thing. He got it off of that kill. I, I do believe, unless uh, he had gotten it earlier and I hadn't noticed. Oh, Robex, he's gonna have to flash away here. Yeah, Blue Otter consistently just in rough spots here, whether they're making the proactive play or they're getting played on. But music is the shining light right now with Kraken Slayer completed. And the first upgrade from the stacks, there's still a glimmer of hope for Blue Otter, even though they are 1.5 thousand behind as we are approaching 10 minutes. Yeah, and Winthrop, on the other hand, in a pretty good position. I, you feel really good as yeah. mobility on a champion that we know him to do very well on. Having that kill, having the 10 CS lead because Blue Otter's attention was focused topside, gives an opportunity for this player who we know can carry to actually do exactly that. We saw what Derry could do uh, with Lynx when you are ahead of the game. So, and we know it could be some pretty crazy stuff. I'm also happy to see from the side of Winthrop, Denethor having a much better showing this time around. He was oh, getting yes. lane leads in the very early levels against Lawrence consistently, but he was not doing a good job of what I had hyped him up for, which is transitioning those into team fights, transitioning those onto the map. This time around, much bigger lead, but he is the focus. He has the target on his back. Except Gold made him available, but no flash, which means Denethor is in a lot of trouble here. Lawrence frontlining, providing all the CC, and they're wow. going to give the kill to Music. <laughs> Looks like Sammy can want it himself, but will at least take the kill participation. Denethor picked up in a side lane again. Oh, there's a play bot side. Sammy can hopefully is watching. 
So you could respond Every with the teleport. Has an yep. Equal and opposite reaction beat down. Now it's a dive. It's time for Winthrop. Double TP. They get one, but they take a lot of damage. Under Sejuani, Samikin's got the damage there as Lynx will pick up the kill. Teleport comes in from Denethor, but the play's already over. Blue Otter have traded one for one. Is it? Denethor has ult. They gotta be really careful. He can absolutely get a kill. Uh, really bold from Denethor. No, it's fine. They, 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 there's no Nautilus, so it, it's fine. And this is good for Winthrop because even though Blue Water do get some kills, look at what Lynx has continuously sacrificing. Now Mobility's yeah. up 20 CS. Him and Chukis have been part of four plates going down. This bot lane is so ahead of the curve right now. And a lot of that had come from the play's top side. The fact that Rovex went for that top lane dive, they didn't even attempt it really. Sword has to flash away from music in the mid lane here. Tough for Winthrop's a mid laner. But the fact that uh, Rovex went for that roam, we saw it. Lynx had to back. He had to give over waves and turret plates and mobility. He was now only one turret plate away from taking that turret at 12 minutes. It's very fast to take a first turret. Yeah, and now, I mean, Winthrop, their comp is about setting up the Zeri and Azir for success. So this is a good spot for them to be in here. Mobility already at that first item. Lynx is still able to match because he's going oh. the poke build. These are cheaper items. So Denethor is not the play, but it's looking like Blue Otter will get six grubs this game. Yeah, especially now that they see the Sejuani bot side. I think that Lynx has actually been playing a really smart game so far. It's tough to be an AD carry and get zero resources. You're always in the lane alone. There's a Sejuani who's trying to dive you constantly, but to Lynx's credit, hasn't died and has just been willing to give up resources that he really wants, but knows he's not in a position to take to allow the team to do this. Music gets all six grubs. Dragon is started. Sword is away from the rest of the team, but the engage goes in instead onto Chookies. Rider Glass taking a lot of damage. Hostile takeover goes wide as Sword now has to jump away. Remember, no flash from the earlier play. And they haven't got enough damage on the Dragon, so Blue Otter can actually walk up and try and hit this themselves now. Music well, will it. it, and that is a fantastic play from Blue Otter. Get the grubs. Push them off of the dragon, hit the dragon. Maybe get even more. Sam is still up here. I know the Sejuani's right there, but now we'll spot him. Yeah, and it's a good thing that they covered too, because otherwise, uh, Winthrop were in a perfect opportunity to just go for the turn. But that feels bad for Winthrop University. Uh, again, even though they have this gold lead, where a lot of it is bot side, a lot of it is also top side. And this is what I was saying in earlier games. Top lane needs to be involved. Uh, when you have early gold leads like this, and because mm -hmm. Denethor didn't have the TP, he couldn't be a part of that dragon fight. Plus, the fact that Lynx, again, is going for cheaper items with the spoke build, it does mean that lead that mobility has, uh, it doesn't feel as good. I think that's part of why we saw Denethor get so aggressive when he did TP bot side, is he yeah. feels that pressure too. He just finished Triforce and was like, okay, I gotta make something happen. I invested the teleport, but Blue Otter deny him that opportunity. They right. only give him a chance to hit them when they're in a 3v1 situation in top lane, and they're not interested in touching the Camille afterwards. And uh, that's making things really awkward for Winthrop University, because you're right, most of that gold lead is in the top lane. And if uh, Blue Otter just play away from that, they're feeling happy. But they might have to play into it now. Harold is up, and Winthrop are looking at it. Uh, I feel like this is going to be Winthrop's, just because, again, how strong Denethor is. He's getting pretty close to level 11. And I think it's just going to be something you end up sacking, but they're looking. Wow, Blue Otter force off Winthrop University. They push in the mid wave. They saw the damage was hitting that wave, so they thought maybe we can actually look for our own play. Don't find it, but at least now have control over this area. I'm still terrified. Sejuani has incredible engage. If you just land that Glacial Prison onto Samikin, or even onto Music, it's spell Doom for Blue Otter. Dennis yeah. is on flank right now. Blue Otter's look. lost track of him. Now they see him. Looking to maybe peel back. Yeah, an I, awkward I... little dance. Yeah, I want to quickly shout out, I like that point, when Winthrop had the Kindred and Blue Otter were playing into it, Ooh. it was the burst kills that were working out in their favor, like this. Goes wide. Now they're turning onto Denethor, looking to burst damage onto the Camille, really good buffer there, Chain of Corruption hit, but still gets the hook shot off, and uh, that's a lot of ultimates used from both sides, now we're just fighting, we're just Whoa. dropping explosive cast, 
knocks everybody in. Chucky's in a rough spot, but what a hostile takeover! Yeah. And what a shuffle from Sword! Blue Otter's gonna have to fight out of this one with Lamsdra's fight. They get one, and now they're gonna get even more. Denethor's in trouble, he's gonna go down. Nobody was on Lynx. A quadra kill to music, and an ace for Blue Otter! And it looks so good at first for Winthrop, but Blue Otter turn it around. Lynx was falling behind, but music was on pace, if not ahead. And you're gonna see this one again. It's Lawrence who finds the angle, because as soon as there's no such body alt, you feel better about going into these team fights. It seemed so good. I can't believe Blue Otter were able to fight through this. Like, watch this hostile takeover and then the shuffle yeah. combo. And the big Everybody's thing about it, too. It? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Music isn't, though. I oh, thought Lynx he wasn't was. Either. And that's what I thought was so good about oh. the ultimate. But because he's still DPSing, and because Music still had a chance to drop the last yeah. respite, that, was, that ended up being with Drops Undoing. The two most important people to hit. I thought the hostile takeover just from yeah, the area sometimes. of effect hit everybody, but it didn't hit Lynx. It didn't hit Music. Those are the two that are going to be doing damage with yeah. their auto attacks. And the fact that they're not hitting their own teammates or hitting you is bad news, Bears, for Winthrop University, as they are now losing a bit of that gold lead. They still have it for right now, but losing that fight is rough. The Herald seems to belong to Blue Otter. Says Lonnie will not make it there in time to steal. And it's just going to be an easy pickup. You know, Winthrop, they're going to look a little menacing, but it's going to be hard for them to actually uh, get anything other than a little bit of deep vision down. Now that we have a second. We were talking about this gold lead Winthrop has. I think we should look at where it really is. Because, one, music is at the top of the charts. Yes, the rest of them are Winthrop. But, like I said before, Lynx, even though he's behind, he's going for a cheaper build, so it doesn't yeah. feel as bad for him. And Sammy Kin, I, he still has a lot of utility with that Rylize going off. That allows music, who's up at the top of the charts, to do the bulk of the work that we've been seeing so far in these team fights. Impressive still, though. The mobility has been able to maintain that gold lead even after that last play. Lynx wasn't the benefactor of a lot of those kills. It was the quadra kill to music. As now Winthrop University are trying to play around that Zeri damage. Everybody grouping up for a pick. Zeri's actually in the mid lane. Oh! oh! oh. That, was, that looked right on the money. I'm actually I surprised so that one didn't hit Sammykin. If I'm sore, I might be asking, hey, can we get a, another look at that from an official? Wants, but either way, it does not. Yeah, he's going to want to receive for that one. Lawrence. The tanky, they throw out the Glacial Prison. Lawrence is still fine. Big skies descend as the Sejuani has to go into full retreat mode. With Thrip University, they use ultimates to try and pick off the tank, and they almost lose their own. And most notably, Music's ult, that Lamb's Respite, is coming back. So Blue Otter, I think, feel pretty good about their chances to be able to fight this, especially Lawrence is the one backing. He has teleport, and he's going to come right back to this fight. Winthrop, they're not out of the woods yet. Dragon has started. Winthrop University want to take this one. Everybody's still up on both sides, but the Sejuani is low, and the health bars are looking great on Blue Otter's side. Sammy can get the pull back in, but he's still pretty tanky. Music can't find the angle in yet. He can use the Lambs' fight to buy time oh! by space. They take out Sejuani. Just killed the enemy jungler. Why not? They'll also get the Dragon. But look at the damage coming in from Sword. Look at his mobility. He's running for it. Mobility's an absolute madman! Denethor behind him! Music has to pop the Lambs' spike, but Mobility just says, I'll do it myself! Shut down for Sammy Kid. But Windham University feel fantastic after that fight. Uh, that is the fight that they needed. They lost the Drake, but they finally managed to get a team fight win into their back pockets. That is some much needed gold and an opportunity for them to just breathe, Kangas. It feels like the last three games, they've been almost constantly on the back foot. And we're going to yeah. take another look at how this happened. Watch the damage dealers. Watch Mobility and watch Sword. I know that the Sejuani goes down early here, but then the damage dealers are able to clean it up after. Yeah, and again, the smite comes through in favor of Blue Otter, but after this point, I have Mobility, full health, drops the Lightning Crash, Robex, unfortunately, drops two hooks in a row. Oh. That combined with the Hostile Takeover just means that Mobility was in that position to use the gold he earned in the early game. I, actually, I'm very surprised that mobility went down. I don't know what the interaction was okay, like. Okay, okay, so with I'll tell the, you. the bailout and the, yeah. the Lambs' Spite. It seemed like bailout was still in effect when Lambs' Spite went down. Yeah, 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 because 
when you're in bailout, if you walk into Lamb's Respite, you actually can't die until it's over. And that's why that's once really it expired, funny. he instantly died. And there that's wasn't time to get the That's actually exceptionally funny. Down. I did not know about that interaction, yeah. but that was that was great. Uh, either way, though, Winthrop University happy about how that last fight went. But yep. what a slobber knocker. I don't use that word too much, but I think it's appropriate in this one. We're just taking turns here, Beat. One team wins a fight, then the next. Right, and I think Winthrop, though, I don't think they're happy about taking turns. I think they want to win some consecutive <laughs> fights, true. especially with the fact that, again, Blue Water, this, they win this game, series is over, and Winthrop's split is done. They're going to have to watch from the sidelines tomorrow as Blue Otter face lit if that ends up happening and work their way through the qualifiers again. What a tense moment for each of these teams. Blue Otter realizing the early game went pretty rough, but they have... Brought it back from the brink off of music having just incredible performance on this Kindred. Also, shout outs to again Lynx for playing a very gracious weak side bot lane. <laughs> Winthrop University, the pressure's on them to not give up on the spring split here. A loss means that they're going home and they've had an incredible run of things so far. Another collegiate representative, we talked about what it means to collegiate as a whole to see Maryville University make NACL finals. Yeah. And you got to imagine that organizations like Winthrop are also looking at that, saying, we can be the next ones. They start the fight onto Rovex. He dredge lines onto the wall to safety and gets out of there. And it looks like we're ready to scrap for Baron. Uh, Baron Vision, I think, is what we're scrapping for at the moment. To Winthrop's credit, having the Azir as well as the Zeri Ooh. does mean you do a lot of Baron damage. This is a very oh, creative yeah. flank, but it's Chucky's. Leading the charge, Handshake lands, Rovex tanks it up. Music is surrounded, but he doesn't quite know it. Now Teleport here. coming through. Music could be in trouble. Denethor peels back onto the teleport. It's Lawrence, and he just wow. immediately flashes. Winthrop University were trying to just get back to their side of the rift. It looked like they almost had a flank on a Blue Otter. What a strange map setup that was, but he goes down. Oh, maybe we go down now. Uh -oh. Interruption lands. Swanee has flash should be just fine, but he hasn't had a chance to use it and just dies. And that's it. No jungler. Maybe now Blue Water do feel good about starting this Baron Kangas. I mean, there's no dragon to play for. They have a soul and a double marksman comp, even though it's lethality, Paris. All that together. I mean, that's a relatively fast Baron take. That's why you can see what they're doing here. They're positioning top, clearing this wave, and surely they're just going to walk their way up to this big warp. I don't know if they have time. Ten seconds now for the Sejuani. Teleport being used I'll by Denethor. They will start now you it just up. walk away. But I, I, they're using it as a magnet. Look at where the Nautilus is. They're going to look for the engage. Rovex misses the dredge line, which I think might signal pull off of the Baron I now. Think so Lawrence too. can also be engaged, but they have the big ultimate from Asol. Samikin's ready for it. Skies descend. Coming down. Big damage on the Chookies. Trying to get the bailout, but not enough time. He will go down. Blue Otter, they don't get the big purple worm, but they will get the enemy support. They're just using it to bait the fight. Yeah, Denethor's teleport, you get Chukis' life. I, that is a fair trade there, at least if you're Blue Otter and uh, you're the ones weighing the trades. So now Denethor, I feeling that pressure again. He's really strong right now individually, so he's trying to make something happen. A kill onto music would be huge, but swing and a miss. Yeah, not able to land the CC. Music still has lame despite anyway, so. Not quite the look from Denethor, who has really struggled to turn his individual leads into team wins so far in this series, despite all of his talents as a player. Now Blue Otter, as a team, are starting up the Baron. Winthrop University, they were near the Dragon. They had both their solo laners there, but Music was actually off the Baron. He's looking for the pick instead. It's again on the Sejuani. It's again not even going to oh. be able to flash. Oh, it's brutal. This jungler is just getting abused here in the river. And Blue Otter are just getting pick after pick. Uh, they're literally farming him. And now surely this is when they walk over to the Baron, but... Music's over the wall. Lawrence with the explosive cask. It hits Denthor into the wall. He's got Flash. He's going to have to use it. No teleport to get back onto the map, though. Maybe, just maybe, this is finally the Baron. But Blue Otter just can't get enough to guarantee the big worm. They, they need to get a couple of kills because they don't have the DPS to actually burn down the Baron fast enough when you factor in the Zeri, when you factor in the Azir. So instead, it's a dragon angle. They'll give Winthrop the opportunity to get vision at the Baron. Yeah, and Winthrop might be in a position where they feel desperate enough to just try and start this, but it's tough. Dragon is done. Blue Otter are walking their way topside, and it ends up being a dragon for nothing. Uh, in favor of Blue Otter. Winthrop. 
Uh, they're on the struggle bus right now, as you said it. It's tough scenes right now. Even though I can't believe they their carries are I know it, it is actually astonishing, but it's tough <laughs> because the happening? conditions for these team fights are really important. I don't know. I don't think we're gonna look at that oh, last Denethor. team fight. Oh wait, oh, he's Camille. Denethor. Oh, uh, actually, it is. Oh, no, but it's Asol. I forgot. Yeah, Asol, Gragas, Nautilus. Notorious champions, all three, for being hard to get away from. Denethor does have the Hexite Ultimatum, but has no backup from the team. They're pinging the Baron, but Denethor move. will go down. The team cannot get Baron in time. Maybe they can get Music. He'll trade one in a 1v4. Music, how the hell did you just do that? I don't even know. Explosive Cast got all three. Mobility's got to get away from the fight, which means that Lynx can free fire here. Lethality Bears will eventually kill the Sejuani. But look at Asol. Catches out Mobility, who is just trying to get to safety. He'll get a double kill for his efforts. And Blue Water, out of nowhere, find themselves an ace. And we're going to watch the this legendary 1v4. Okay, to be fair... Uh, he did a lot of damage to Sword before wow. everyone else got involved, and that was the big reason that ended up coming through. So even though the CC was good from the Sedge, and they got the kill, I so much has been lost for Winthrop anyway. Links with the instant cleanse as well to get away I from the Sejuani. Oh, what a flank from Sammy Kin, who's been having an incredible series. This mid laner, yep. he said, I know that I'm better. I know that I can make it to NACL to the tier two. He wasn't scouted to a team and just, you know, taking the shortcut. He's on a team in the qualifier tournament. He is having to take down Giants to qualify himself into the league. And he's got one more series ahead of him. It's looking positive right now. I know that the gold is even, but with the momentum the Blue Water have had, it seems like they can close this series out here, which means that we could have a Blue Water versus Lit. Best of five to determine who is making it in to the NACL. And as for Winthrop, a lot of their chances lie on Chookies and the artist formerly known as Trickster. The CC, the Ultimates, Kangas, they need to be pristine because mobility is really strong right now. This is a three item Zeri. If you can get some of those isolated picks like Blue Water did in previous games when the roles were reversed and Winthrop had the Kindred, you blow someone up either in isolation or before that Lamb's Respite comes out, that's how you get yourself that numbers advantage. That's what Winthrop need to do if they want back in this game. A lot of pressure on mobility as a player right now. I know that there's been memes all split for power rankings of certain positions in Collegiate. Mobility, one of those players that has been talked about as one of the premier bot laners in Collegiate right now in the qualifier tournaments. And everything can rest on how well Mobility plays this next fight. Has ultimate, has flash, has ghost, and has three and a half items. This Zeri needs to output damage for Winthrop University to have a shot here. As it seems like the final moments here to catch our breath before an explosive fight. Dragon Soul in a minute and a half. Aaron's still on the table. Denethor is actually split pushing, so Winthrop University focusing on the map as opposed to just grouping at the objectives. And that is something Camille is really good at. Unfortunately, no grubs went over to Winthrop, so no extra damage, no extra power to take down structures. But still, Denethor has picked up a lot of gold. He's getting closer to that third item. He is also another big factor of whether or not Winthrop can win out these team fights. He's finished the Sterics, so he's got a lot of tankiness. Oh, ooh. Flash out from Chucky is going to want yeah. that one back, as it's so terrifying to walk up to a Nautilus composition at this state of the game. One dredge line could spell oh, your entire spring split. They don't and know. we're on the Baron. They don't know. The Rovex is on the other side. Turn onto the Sejuani. Skies descend on everybody. As music is hit with us, I'll take over. Oh my in god! Oh, and Denethor gets the Baron! Are you kidding me? As now, the University looks to take the fight this after is the, the angle. fact. Blue Water have taken down a couple. Lynx is still alive. He is a snipe and he snipes Sword with like 10 health left. Mobility though, this is his moment. There it is! The triple kill to Zeri and with the University are still in this game. Not only that, they firmly rest control from Blue Otter. That was the angle Winthrop needed to bring it back. And they were split up. Blue Otter 
torn between finishing the Baron, trying to survive, and keeping the Sedge out of the pit. It mm -hmm. gave, it was this perfect storm that allowed Denethor himself to steal the Baron and to start uh, picking up kills, allowing Mobility to also get some damage in. That time around, the Hostile Takeover hit the two members you needed to oh, hit. The hits. Kindred and the Varus were just smacking each other. And then here comes Death. We're like, oh, all right. Well, <laughs> I guess the two carries are like 20% health now. Easy yep. cleanups. So what a fight. What a setup from Winthrop. And now they are five and a half thousand gold in the lead when it looks like the series could have ended right there. Depending yeah, on I how that fight went, if that goes the wrong way, that is their entire spring split done. Yep. And I really got to stress that that is just about a 5,000 gold swing, just like that. Yeah. Over to Winthrop University and the exact swing they needed to take us to a game of five. They're not trying to let their spring split end like this. And now they're the ones who have the keys to game four. Baron Buff can begin the siege. Denethor's already done a lot of work in these side lanes. Next up is the tier two top lane turret would make all outer turrets for Winthrop University, giving them a lot of range on the map, whether they can break an inhibitor or not with the Baron buff. Chain of Corruption goes out and misses, so Lynx will not have that available anymore. Music's just trying to catch these waves. For Blue Otter, it's wait out the Baron and hope yeah. for the best after the fact, because they now have a pretty tough gold lead that they're fighting into. Denethor looks for a big engage on the Music. Lambs is by not oh, available, gone. and he's down. Mobility on a rampage. Denethor finding a hero pick. The clutch that we needed to see from him, again, the R5 Camille, his most played champ, and something that we highlighted for getting picks, isolating squishy characters with that Hexec ultimatum. You take down Music, who's been having such a big impact on this game, so now Blue Water's base is under siege. Without their jungler, Blue Water cannot hope to defend these inhibitors. Winthrop University will now walk up and try and catch this mid wave as it's pushing in. Blue Otter are using their abilities. That poke Varus is actually doing a lot of work right now, and Asol so hard to actually get waves to crash turrets because of the wave clear that Asol possesses. So yeah. that's it. That's the final Baron push from Winthrop University. That will take some jungle camps, reset, get back onto the map. Two minutes fifty till Dragon and till the next Baron. Strap in, everybody. I think we're going to the late game. I mean, we've been in late game. We're just going into later game. As game now, late game. Yeah, exactly. And Winthrop, they have a lot of gold to spend, Kangas, because now, again, I can't stress that Winthrop had a, a slightly less than 1,000 gold lead before everything collapsed uh, for Blue Otter. So now, suddenly, they're up 7,400 gold, and Denethor is monstrous in this game. He has four items. He's on pace with Mobility, who has been doing so much work as well. And those are the two people to keep your eyes on in these last remaining team fights. Also keep your eyes on the levels. Right now, Winthrop University, it's not just the gold, they're also up in levels in some key aspects. Down to Thor and Sword being ahead of their lane opponents. Mobility level 16. Yeah. So Lynx is 14. A lot of that just because of how Lynx has constantly had to go back. 359 stacks on Asol though. Oh. The, the later the game goes, the more the scaling, I think, will uh, swing in favor of Blue Otter. I know that things like Camille uh, yeah. in the Azir late game are also terrifying in area as well, but technically the Azir will, or the uh, Ace will just keep scaling up. So if Blue Otter can get those snacks on Dragon, good news for them. I think I, I think I kind of agree, but it's very slight because Denethor, he still has that angle to have a lot of impact. And I think someone we've been highlighting earlier on in this game too is Chookies. Those hostile takeovers, if they land true Kangas, mm -hmm. there isn't much Blue Otter could do to interact with these team fights. Saving, save uh, flashing, using the Lem's respite early, something like that. Or stasis for Lawrence, who just finished the uh, Zonia's Hourglass. So Winthrop, they have a lot of ways to play out these team fights. And I think it's honestly, I mean, in terms of comps, a much more even game. But in terms of gold, I right, Winthrop are very much in control. The music just completed fourth item, so if that hostile takeover hits the Kindred, really bad news. Robex, oh, yeah. bad news for the support here. Teleport coming in, Denethor already found it. That's it's a dead Nautilus, and that is a 4v5 for the rest of this I play. Blue Otter, backs against the wall. What do you have in the tank? A lot of damage on the Sejuani, but the Redemption will keep them alive. Denethor with a re-engage, flashes forward. Music has the limbs despite Denethor could be in some trouble, but here comes Sword with the wow. long range shuffle. A lot of damage. Out from Sammy, Sammy Kim, though, Kim. the Aesol's keeping them in this. No shot! 
Guardian Angel used, mobility will come back up, but Lawrence is right here, we'll get the slow flash out from the Zeri. Chookies can't quite get in there. Samykin just saved the entire game for Blue Otter. Third split of competitive play, and he clutches up big time. How about Samykin of Blue Otter? It looked like it was done and dusted. I was ready to talk about game five, Kangas, but he helps his team hold on just that much longer. I honestly, that is a little sign of concern for Winthrop. The fact that they got the easiest pick on the Robex in the universe and Blue Otter still managed to hold on to their base. I talk a lot to casual fans at the LCS that don't necessarily watch NACL, let alone the OQs. But at LCS Finals, I was asked the question, hey, are there any players in the qualifier tournament coming up that you're keeping your eye on? And I had two answers. The two players I was most hyped for, Samykin and Denethor. And in that play, you see why Denethor <laughs> yeah. tried so hard to make the game ending play, but Samykin keeps Blue Water in it, and we're going to have another fight at Baron. Three dragons to each team. It all comes down to this. There you go, Kangas. You've got to have it both ways. But unfortunately, these teams cannot have it both ways. As the Baron is stopped, Teleport is taken out. So Winthrop, they're happy to walk away from this one. They just need to set up, reestablish vision on the Baron. This is and really it ends bad for fun. Blue Otter. Look at the TP yeah. flanks that Denthor has, let alone the Look bot at the wave. wave. Side. He yeah. can just TP and end the game. It's a really awkward spot for Blue Otter. They kind of have to walk in 4v5 as Winthrop will keep everybody together on the Baron. It could come down to a steal. Can Music get in there? They peel off the Baron, though. It's still think... aggroed. And Blue Otter are just going to take the 50-50. They're getting engaged shot now. Music could be in trouble. He's taking a lot of damage here. Everybody's jumping to the Kindred. Music's got to stay alive. If he goes down, that is the game. Samykin has now rejoined in on the fight. They have the Aso. Big damage. Look at oh that my burn! God. And that is a first kill for Samykin. A double kill to Samykin. And the game just might be over. Teleport, teleport. Denethor. Teleport. It's the final push. Can Denethor close the game on his own? A quadra kill to Samykin. The Ace still trying to do it. Oh, the inhibitor spawned. Oh, no shot. He doesn't have the time now. Denethor's all alone. He's got the supers. But everyone from Blue Water has joined in. And Denethor's going to try and escape now. But there is no escape. Give him the Penta kill to the Dragon. Penta kill to Samykin. And to cap off an insane fight, an insane game, an insane series for Blue Otter. They've taken that next step, Kangas, and they will see it tomorrow. What a performance from the middle lane rookie from Blue Otter. Sammy can keep them in the game. Sammy can earn them the win. And Winthrop backs against the wall, could not clutch it up. Blue Otter just got to hit the Nexus, and they will take the series. And just like that, 3-1 fashion, Blue Otter are one step away from NACL, Kangas. We got to replay this last fight. I'm really glad we do because there is something really crucial to talk about here. I, I mean, for one thing, you see Samykin on that bottom side of the map. He's concerned about the back door that you mentioned. But because Winthrop actually take time to take this Baron, they stop it at this point. Watch Denethor. Yeah. He's isolated from the team, and Sammy can't have time to join with TP. And while this fight is going on, watch the Camille. Watch the Camille. Denethor seems unsure Ooh. what to do. He's trying to hold the Baron. He goes over the wall, maybe thinking about teleporting into the bot lane. And ultimately, this whole fight takes place without the Camille. The big That's damage rough. dealer, the big threat Winthrop have had this entire game. That's a tough look at the very end and what yeah. was a very stressful situation. I mean, I, even if the inhibitor he doesn't respawn, I he don't think he has time. He can no. at least get one turret, but that game was going to end anyway. Oh, heartbreak for Winthrop University after they showed so much heart throughout their run. The collegiate yeah. representative, the last collegiate representative is gone. But that means Blue Otter are making the lower bracket run. They get revenge against Winthrop who put them in the lower bracket to begin with. Right. And now Music will get his chance at revenge. They already took out Mirage. He's going up against Lit. He could take down the two teams that took him down to qualify a last promotion tournament on his way back into the NACL. What a story for Blue Otter and what yeah. a series. We're going to send it to a short break before we're back with a player interview. You won't want to miss it. We'll be right back after this. Introducing the new Footlong Sidekicks at Subway. 
Try the warm and delicious footlong cookie, footlong pretzel, or footlong churro. My name is Samrith Lung. I go by Samikin on League of Legends. I was born in Cambodia, but I moved to the United States to Pennsylvania around 2008, so when I was about four or five years old. We mainly played video games such as Wii Sports, and then we eventually got a laptop for my whole family to use. Since we like live next to our cousins, we visited them often, and then we saw them playing League of Legends. So my brother got into League of Legends, and then I saw him playing, and then I got into League of Legends. I started in late season three so i was about 
10 years old, like 9 to 10 years old. I was like a silver four player for like two years. In ninth grade, I hit Grandmasters for the first time. It was like about 450-ish LP. And then during the same summer, I took a University of Pennsylvania summer program for mechanical engineering. And one of the TAs there was a college student in like his junior year. And he also played League of Legends. I asked him if we could like play together sometime. And then like the next day when I saw him after we added each other, he was like, I thought you'd just be like some kind of gold player like me. And then I like look over my friends list and I see that you're Grandmasters. I was like, oh, is that a high rank for like people my age? And he was like, yeah. I was like, oh. I am known as the Zoe one trick in high elo, being able to hit rank one on a champion that most people didn't really play or believe to be really weak. So I'm like really happy that I was able to consistently stay in within the top 10 of NA for basically like three, four months, even like the middle of the season to the end of the season. I would say what really got me going into the competitiveness of League of Legends was definitely once I realized that I could get scholarships for just being good at the game and then finding a college that would be able to sponsor me. But in the end, I ended up choosing to not go the collegiate route. I was told by like my brother who had like a lot more experience in the esports scene that it's better to just go to a college that's good for you, that has like a good reputation, and work on amateur stuff on the side. So I ended up going to Boston University. They didn't really give me any scholarships for being like an esports player. After from persuading from my friend Windoges, who also happens to be in the same year as me, he and convinced me to get onto the League of Legends team because I was like very apprehensive at first. I made like a lot of great friends here at Boston University. It made me realize that the main reason why I chose to go to an out of state college was so kind of have a lot more freedom from my busy family life and meet like a whole bunch of new people outside of like my usual sphere of friends by taking this leap. I knew and I'd hoped that I'd be good enough to be able to get into a new world of amateur and LCS. After going 2-3 in the spring open qualifiers, I had to take a break. I couldn't play in the summer open qualifiers because I was vacationing in Cambodia with my family at the time. I came back, grinded it all, hell out of solo queue, started college, got back challenger, and then I got invited by Karen Moser from EG as a part of the EG X HPE combine. And I was really surprised because there was like this rule about 40% of a person's champion pool cannot be on one champion. And I asked her about it uh, after the combine and she was like, oh yeah, you were like just under 40% when we made the snapshot of inviting players. That is really lucky. If I had over 40%, I probably wouldn't have been able to been invited to that combine and I probably wouldn't have been like exposed to the world basically. Going into the combine, I knew that I was one of the better like laners and i know that i could transition that into leads so i felt like i was definitely around the same level as everyone else and maybe even like a little bit better in certain aspects such as like laning and mechanics and micro so i felt like i really belonged there there was no imposter syndrome this time rovex was the one that actually reached out to me i was talking with some other teams about potentially being on their roster but then i saw their roster with lynx and music and lawrence and they were only missing a mid laner most of the like the really good mid, -laner, mid laners already had like nacl offers and oq offers from like really established teams or like orgs i was basically one of the last few mid laners i guess that was the main reason why they picked me so like i'm grateful for it but i'm glad to have been given this chance my goal is to definitely become an lcs player my goal for this split is to definitely make it to at least a promotional tournament and defeat an nacl team i've already declared myself one rival one mr toasty alex we basically started at the exact same time he is basically the opposite of what I am, even though we have both very good lane phases, he is, a, in my opinion, he has a lot better macro and engages in team fights as well as flanks, which is something that I still lack. He will be the one person that I will be looking forward to playing against and defeating eventually. On Twitter, I don't really use Twitter that much, at Samikin PW, at Samikin Lol on Twitch as well. And on YouTube, it's just Samikin, I believe. Hello and welcome back everybody for our post series interview. We have the victorious jungler music joining us on his rampage with the promotion tournament and revenge tour as we are now uh, billing it here. Music, are you aware that you have already eliminated Mirage and your next opponent is lit? The two teams that actually knocked you out of the promotion tournament in the past? Yes, I'm really hungry for revenge, so I'm excited for tomorrow. <laughs> Job's right, not cool. done.
Yeah, respect. That's what we were telling uh, Sammy Kid before uh, you ended up popping in. So I love that mentality. Uh, I quickly want to ask you too. Uh, I actually want to ask you about your time on Supernova because now during the first qualifier, uh, it was a lot of players streaming. You streamed uh, just as much as anybody else, if not more. And from that, we could tell how vocal you were and how much you led team comms. Were you like that on Supernova? Is that a thing you developed playing with newer players on Blue Otter? How did it ha how did it happen? I've always been a vocal shot caller on my teams. Uh, this one requires a bit more because I feel like Samikin is a rookie on like my previous team, so I need to help him a bit more with the calls. So it's mostly me and Rovix kind of linking with him. Uh, but I've always been a very vocal shot caller on every team I was. So it's like not that's something that we just have to adapt with the players I play with. All right. What's it been like playing with Sammy Kin? He just got a pentakill in that last game to close things out. He kind of saved the game too when Denethor almost found the clutch engaged to close yeah. it out in the bottom lane. What's it been like to work with this new guy kind of fresh to the scene? Oh, it's been great. Uh, I love seeing a, a rookie develop and show what he's worth and then his potential. Um, this is the case for Sammy Kin. I think he's like such an excellent player. So like great mechanics. Like I can't like beyond to start talking about how good he is. This is like, is I would say his first like split where he's playing with veteran players that we can like lead him because he's like a rookie. And I think he has so much potential the more he plays because he has a really weird champ pool and he's fast at learning new champions. So I think he has a very bright future, future for himself. He just has to keep putting in the work. I want to bounce off and get a little deeper into that as well, because you were even in some of the tryouts in off season that Sammy Kin was first kind of dipping his toes into competitive. How have you seen the growth in him from those first, you know, tryouts back? Like, I think it's like EG Combine, Supernova Combine, like those ones in the off season compared to now. Like how, how much has he grown as a player that you've been able to witness? He's grown a lot. I feel like he's gained, he's gotten confidence, he's expanded his shampoo. I think he also knows what comms he needs to talk and what to do. There's been a lot of growth. And I think it's also up to uh, the players he's winning, the coaching staff to help him grow. As a player, that's how it is with rookies. And I feel like we're all trying to help him the best way we can. And I think it's going pretty good and I'm happy. Uh, something I wanted to ask uh, is we were, I mean, I mentioned it on broadcast and we were talking about it uh, before going uh, live with this interview. But I really liked a lot of the early game strategies you guys were running, the level ones. And I want to give you a chance to talk about, you know, who's responsible for a lot of that. I'll take responsibility for that. Uh, the coach also helps sometimes, but there it is. I was pretty. I was trying to think about like what are we gonna do in their level ones and what our level one is worth. It's like something we always like like talk about. And I think in like the first game, it's like they have a Nautilus. They will try to fish for vision. Like this is like an obvious five man. If we stack, they're dead. It's like easy. I think yeah. this last game cheese. It's like I think you can do. People don't expect it because like a lot of people like trying to play for afterwards, and a lot of teams are like kind of very um. Autopilot. They have a pattern where they just always try to play for like a word on the side or afterward and try to cover. So it feels like a good bait yeah. in the series. Hey, it worked out it for was. you. It seemed like every single game you had level one game plans and we're excited to see how those continue going into your next series because you have lit ahead of you tomorrow. One more series music. I'm going to let you get going and rest up on any final message that you have for anybody out there watching. Uh, Yeah, Rock Boom, I'm coming for you. All right, Rock it. Boom, Gauntlet's been thrown. Let's see if he can defend this spot. Thanks so much for coming on, chatting with this music, and best of luck going into prep for tomorrow. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Everybody say bye, Music 07 to the chat for the jungler. Victorious today, but again, a series ahead of him. Beat down. This is the revenge tour of Music. He has yeah. the opportunity. Do you think they can do it? Uh, I think they certainly can. I mean, lit they've been playing better than what we've seen in the nacl this tournament but i think blue water have been playing incredible these last two series so i really think it is anybody's game and that is an exciting series to look at very exciting series yeah. to look at in fact let's take a look at it right now with our updated bracket one of the last times you'll see this one this week what a promotion tournament it has been but it all comes down to tomorrow with one last best of five the number one seeded lit esports an upset by CCG in their upper bracket promotion match of one more shot. We saw in the last promotion tournament, Supernova in a very similar position. They also had two lives and lost both qualifying matches. And yeah. Music was on that team. Now yeah. we could have rules reversed with Blue Otter in the lower bracket. Knocked down their round one. 
making the run and hoping to make two teams newly qualified for NACL Summer Split. That's going to wrap up our show tonight, though. Thank you, Beatdown, for coming on. We we were finally put together, and the show didn't did burn it. down. I know, and it was a good. It was a, we had a great series on, to top it all off. We had a great interview. Shout out music for that, and mm. I think it's a great way to cap off our split. Absolutely. Well, it's not capped up yet because there's still one. I'm in hours in you and everybody. me. Hours split. You know, fair enough. And this is the last this time to see us. us. We'll have amazing second, casters you know, on <laughs> tomorrow. So make sure to tune in. Thank you to production for getting the gears rolling. Thank you to everybody for cheering on your favorite teams and players. Thank you for the players for providing us the entertainment of the evening. You won't want to miss the finals tomorrow to see the last team qualifying for the NACL summer split. We'll all be there. We'll see you there.